over the last couple of weeks ago, last week of course was Easter, and we had a great service, I thought. Good Friday was a fantastic service. Uh, but two weeks ago we were at Bert and Jordan, Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. And if you recall in that section of scripture, we, we talked about judging, right? Judge not, lest you be judged. Uh, by how you judge, the measure you use to judge another person, that's how you'll, measure, that's how you'll be measured. That was where we were talking about, or where we were, where we were looking at, as Jesus was continuing his, his sermon on the mount. <clears throat> and then, um, yesterday, Jeff and I were talking about this a little bit, and uh, we, were, we, were, we were thinking about uh, judging a little bit, and, and um, how many of us think that we don't judge? You know, we can say, I don't judge people, I, don't, I never do that. And then we were talking about driving, and how many of us, everybody else around us who drives are idiots. Nobody around us can drive. We drive down the road and we What's wrong? What's wrong with that guy? He, he is such a moron. Why would he? Why does he drive like he does? And, I, and I, then both of us thought, yeah. And then we, we think about the time that, that we cut somebody off, or that we're speeding, or that we're doing such and such. And, and, and I'm, they're probably thinking the same thing about us, right? So by the same measure, you know, we're being measured by, by other drivers, by how we how we talk about them. So it's very common, very you know, judging is a part of our lives. And uh, what that section of scripture was. was trying to get us to understand what Jesus is trying to get across to those, his believers, his disciples, is that we need to, to be cautious. We need to look at our own lives and understand that. And in, in the, so these previous six verses of Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, he's telling us to be careful how we judge one another. It came down to us look, first looking inward before we look outward at the world around us. Maybe even more specifically, before we judge a brother or sister in Christ, we better get our own life in order as well. And then we are reminded that, some, that sometimes we should not waste our time uh, on, on giving the truth to those who are not willing to hear it as well. So when we share the, share the truth of, of sin, or we share the truth of what's, of what's going on around us, or share the truth with what's, what's happening in a person's life, if they're not willing to hear it, if they're not willing to receive it, we're not to waste our time doing that as well, because it's like as if we're, we're giving pearls to swine or to the dogs, those unclean animals. And, it, and it, they'll just end up tearing it up and, and throwing it back at us. So this is the context of what Jesus is about to say next. And as we bring the, bring the truth or what the good news, we should, we should look to God for help. And that's what this next section of Scripture is, is, letting, is letting us see. In verse 7 through 12 of Matthew's Gospels, chapter 7, we see that, that the first verses is our con first six verses are our context. The next six verses are how we go about being able to do that. How we're to go about being able to not judge. How we're go about to go, how we're not to, to look first, how we're to look inward first and be able to let God reveal to us what's in our life first before we go and preach and proclaim to others what's going on in their life. So in this section of scripture, I believe Jesus is helping us understand that very, very, very much. And that, and that, and that we're not to do it alone, that we're not to go it alone, that he's there to help us. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 12, we read, Keep asking, and it will be given to you. Keep searching, and you'll find. Keep knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive it, and the one who searches, finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Would a man among you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or ask for a fish, and will give him a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your, heaven, your Father in heaven give you good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want others to do for you, do also the same for them. This is the law of the prophets. That section of scripture is an interesting section of scripture. It's been used for very many different things. It's usually referring to prayer, looking at prayer, and I think that's, that's appropriate. But it also has a little bit more to it than that, and especially when you take it into context with the whole chapter, especially the first six verses of the chapter. And it helps us to understand that. And, and apart from the first six verses, verse 12 would be a little confusing, I believe. So we, we need to keep, put, keep, keep it in context. Anytime we look at Scripture, anytime we look at God's Word, it's always important to look at what's going on around the verses to get, get, get a better understanding of what's going on in the verses that we want to, we're examining. Because if you don't, 
they can be taken out of context, and they can be taken and to mean lots of different things that, that are, they're not intended to mean. So we're going to look at this in context of, of judging them, in other words. So if you're, how we judge others, how we look at other people, how we look at our own life, how we look inward and, and to take care of our own, our own life. And really what we see here is, really what I, can, what I see here, and I understand here after reading commentaries and studying this passage of Scripture, it's about our relationship with God. And it's a very natural progression of that relationship. First of all, verse 7 of our, our text this morning is the, very much the progression of that relationship. <coughs> if you desire to move closer to God, there must be a natural movement towards Him. We cannot stay at a distance. We cannot expect that when we, that we're, that if we, when we come to Christ, when we receive Him as Savior, that we can stay in that place for the rest of our relationship. Like any other relationship that we have. When we come and we get to know somebody, we get close to somebody, if we only ever just become that, that just that person they've met and, and we never grow closer, then that relationship never, get, that relationship never grow, grows deeper, does it? In other words, we have a lot of acquaintances. We never have that deep relationship. When I think of my wife and, and, uh, and our relationship, how we were when we met 30 years ago, that's that long ago. Some of you aren't even that old, right? But we met 30 years ago. And if all I did was look at her and see her at church, as she sat in the pew, as she came from, from uh, Vancouver to go to the University of Alberta, and I saw this beautiful blonde girl, with this gorgeous, this gorgeous blonde that came to our church, and uh, I, I said, I, I went introduce myself to her and said, hi, my name is Dennis, and that was it. My relationship would not have grown much closer with her. I had to go and bug her. I had to go, and she, and she had an interesting landlady where she was living. She lived just about five or ten blocks away from where I lived. And she had this interesting landlady that would just never leave her alone, and, and it, was, it was terrible. It was a terrible situation for her. So she asked my father one day, he said, it would be okay. I'm not sure how, the, how it got to this point, but she said, can I come to the church and, and, and study at the church so I can get, get prepared for class and everything? And she needed a lot of study. Because, you know, she was, well, she, she was that person that, never mind, that, that, that's another story. But she, she needed to study, and she needed to have that time by herself so that she could focus on her, on her schoolwork and get her projects done. You know, the hard, hard work of a home ec student. And, uh, and she, so she had all these different projects and things, and she, she needed some time and space. And so, as a good young man that I was, and, and an interested, interested in, in this beautiful blonde girl that came to our church, I, I said, well, you know, I'm going to go and seek her out. I'm going to go and, 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 and hang out a little bit and get to know her a little better and get to, get to see who she, who she is and, and talk to her. And so, so I would go over when she was at the, at the church and I'd bug her and I'd sit and, and talk and, you know, and just chat it up. I was, you know, I'm, and, and I'm not really a chatty guy. Lily and I had this conversation even yesterday. I'm not, I'm not the type of person that really sits and I'm not, small talk is not my, is not my best thing. In fact, it, I, it, I'd like to just come and just give you the information, you give me the information, and then we're done, and that's great. I got, then I, I know what I'm doing, and I, I can go with that. <laughs> so this was a lot of work for me, but I was seeking her out. I was trying to get to know her, and get to understand her, and get closer to her. See, if I ever, if I just was too shy, and I, I sat on the other side of the church with my mom, and, and I always sat with my mom on, on Sunday mornings, and uh, my, dad, my dad would preach, and I would sit there, and if I just looked at her at a distance, and waved occasionally, and, and you know, we did get to introduce, I did introduce myself to her, and, and that, but I began to seek her out. And then I, and, and so what I also would do to seek her out is I would say, ask my dad, I said, can I go pick her up for church, and you pick up the old ladies for church, you know, we'll switch roles a little bit here, you know what, so he said, okay, you, I'll go get, I'll go get see your suit, and, and you can go get our dad. And I, I said, okay, that's a great, great plan. So then I was still seeking her out a little bit more, right? I didn't know, getting to know her, and, and you know, it's like, well, I didn't, and then you have that time between, between her, where she was living, and church, and I get to talk to her a little bit more, and seek, and seek out a little bit more information, and get to know her. She didn't have a boyfriend at the time, but that didn't bother me. I figured, she's away, she's in Vancouver, she's her being. But so I, so I, I guess I pursued this, you know, like I kept going for this, 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 this relationship. And so then, moved a little bit further along, and I remember one Saturday she was at the church and she was studying and she was working hard. I didn't know what she was doing. I didn't really care. I wouldn't pay attention to what she was doing in her homework. I didn't care that she had to study either, really. 
I was there, I had a purpose. Next, I knew that I had to ask her out. So, I spent the whole day, you know, and we started talking, and it's like, what are you doing tonight? Oh, not much, no, no, me neither. And uh, so, so I said, eventually, I said, you know, would you like to go to a movie? So I asked her. And then we, and so that, that relationship got going over. Now, she says she swears to this day, she figured we were going as a group. So we went home, and she came over to my house, which the church was, was uh, the church house, our, our, our man's was right next door. And we went to, she came over and we had dinner with us and stuff, and we were getting ready to go to the movie. My little sister, the rock little thing that she is, she says, I'm going to the movie too. I said, no, you're not going to the movie. And then, so we, uh, it's a, we had this little discussion and an argument with my, my little sister, because I wanted to, I asked Ardell to go. I wanted to get to know her more. I wanted to get her to know her better. And I, I didn't want my little sister. She was 11 months younger than I am. I failed grade 2. And from grade 2 on, she was, had, she was with me all the time. She was in my same grade and, and, and everything. And so in junior high school, she was even in some of my same classes at the time. And then she and then we got to high school and that. And, and now I, I met this girl that's in university. I'm in grade 11. And I'm thinking, this is awesome. I, I'm, I'm going to be the good man on campus. I'm going to be the cool guy. I've asked this girl out. She's now said that she'll go to the movie with me. And, 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 and so we're getting the, it's progressing a little bit further. And so then, we had to go leave our in, in the living room, and my dad and I had to go have a conversation with my little sister and explain to her that she wasn't coming. And uh, so, we go to the movie, and we, and you see how the fresh of the relationship is? We went to watch Chariots of Fire, and uh, it was a great movie. And uh, I spent the whole movie, whatever length of time, 90 minutes, an hour and a half of a, a movie, sitting there going, do I grab her hand or not grab her hand? Do I grab her hand or not grab her hand? So finally, by the end, by near the end of the movie, I finally went grab her hand. <laughs> and, and, and you know, she, she left it there the whole time on the on the on the, on the armrest, right? For the whole time. It's like, come on, take it, take it, take it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I took, but I took control. Like, and, I, and so basically, I, I began. I, I finally got from that, that 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 introduction of getting uh, and then that seeking, and then I got to the asking, and then I finally got to that knock. And I was in between grade, in the summer of grade 11 and between grade 11 and grade 12. I worked, began to work for the Naval Reserve. So I'm very important when I write this thing. And I, and I worked hard that summer. I went on my basic training and I, I made enough money that I could buy my wife this huge ring well diamond chip. And, uh, and, and, you know, I was, and, and, I, and it was so exciting. I first went and bought a ring and my, my lovely older sister, I have three older sisters, one of them decided to talk to Ardell on the phone somehow and, I don't, and, and tell her what ring I bought her. And so I said, I took the ring back and I bought a different ring. And so that she wouldn't know what it would look like. And, and then I went out to Vancouver that summer. She was out there at home for the summer. And I, and I went to me. She picked me up at the airport. We went to it for a drive. And uh, she said, she, she knew I had the ring. And uh, I said, oh, I forgot. And, uh, and so we, but we went and said, let's go for a drive. Go to the park. We went to Bear Street Park. And uh, it was raining the night, and I finally said, will you marry me? So I knocked on the door, and, I, and, and she said yes. And 29 years, 28 years later, I guess it was, well, because it was that summer we got married, right? The next summer. So after grade 12, I got married. And 27 years now, we've been married. And if I ever let that relationship progress, I may not even be standing here. And I certainly wouldn't have three lovely children and a beautiful granddaughter. And I wouldn't have all these wonderful things. I had to let the relationship progress. Verse 7 of this chapter was keep asking and it'll be given to you. Keep searching and you'll find. Keep knocking and the door will be open. Jesus is desiring for us to seek out that relationship with Him. He wants us, He says, you know, we, we struggle. We don't know how we're going to do these things. How we're going to, to grow in our relationship with Him. Or how we're going to be able to not judge. How we're going to be able to live like a disciple we should be. No, well, it begins by seeking Jesus Christ. And then it begins by asking Him to walk with us. To, to grow closer to us. To help us to understand these things. And help us to learn. And then it is knocking on the door and saying, Lord, open the door. Help me know how it is you want me to live. And, and allow Him. That's the relationship, the progression of the relationship we see in this passage of Scripture. 
And then it goes on in, in verses 8 through 11, and it talks about the logic of that relationship. God desires to have us draw closer to Him. He's willing if we're willing, if we are willing. Verse 8 through 11 says, For everyone who asks, receive. And the one who searches, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What man among you, is, if his son asks for bread, then will give him a stone? Or asks for a fish, then will give him a snake? If you then, be, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in Heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? You see, what He is trying to tell us is, if you are willing to pursue that relationship, if you really want to grow closer to God, if you want to understand how He desires for you to live, how He wants you to walk in this world, how He wants you to live your life, how He wants you to not judge and, and, to, and to do all those things that we tend to do. You have a relationship that's close to Him. He just wants us to, to, to pursue it. We can't just stay at that distance and just wait occasionally. We need to go and seek Him. Ask, ask Him and not
Mark 12, 29 to 31, he says this. This is the most important, Jesus answered. Listen, Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with all your heart. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. There are no greater, no other commandment greater than these. You take this apart. Are we willing to treat others how we want to be treated? Is that how we do things? Is that how we operate? Sometimes I don't think we do. Sometimes we're very quick to judge. Sometimes we're very quick to, to criticize. Sometimes we're very quick to, do, to turn our back on someone. Sometimes we're very quick to look down on our nose at them. And if you want to really not be that way, if you want to change your, the way you're doing those things, we need to take on the concept that we find in John chapter 15, verse 13. It says, no, greater love, no one has greater love than this than one who has laid down his life for his friends. And Jesus is our example. <laughs> Ultimately, Jesus did this for each one of us. Before you judge others, before you let that hurtful word come, come out of your mouth, before you write someone off because they don't measure up to your standards, think of where we measured up before we met Christ. Yet Jesus died for us. Then we ask, we ask for a closer, we then ask for a closer relationship with God. So we can help you love as He loves you. So he, he can help you forgive as He has forgiven you. So He can help you understand as He has understand, understood you. Seek out that relationship with God so He can show you the way He has loved you. And then enter into that relationship with God so that He can walk with you and help you live the love that He has loved you. The love that He has loved you. God wants to make his ways are ours. His ways are all about grace, love, and forgiveness. His way is the way of the cross. What we're talking about in these 12 verses is not a standard that Jesus expects from the world. It is a standard that he, that of conduct that he expects from each of us who are called his followers, his believers. If you are a kingdom citizen, this is how you are to treat one another.
sharing the same feelings, focusing on one goal. Do not, or pardon me, do nothing out of rivalry or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Make your attitude, make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus, who existed in the form of God, not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of men. And when he had, had come as a man in his external form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the, at, the, at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Do nothing out of God or conceit, but in humility consider others far more important than yourselves. Will you come today and lay down your time and your presence? Will you come today and surrender yourself? Instead of surrender your self will to the will of God. Will you come today and ask God for help? Seek God for understanding and enter the kingdom of God and enter, <coughs> and enter the kingdom of God to be Christ's Lord. Will you come?